Yes, hello and welcome everyone. My name is Matthias Ehrenborg and I'm an equity analyst here at RedEye, where I primarily follow companies active within the tech and clean tech sector, which includes iTech. And uh, with us today, we have the CEO of iTech, Philippe Chaban, who will present the company. And uh, Philip, I don't want to steal any of your precious time, so please go ahead and uh, present. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, great to be on your, on your interesting day today. Uh, always a pleasure. So uh, I'm broadcasting here from uh, Gothenburg in uh, our facilities, which are located uh, in the facilities of AstraZeneca, actually. That's why it looks uh, quite uh, modern, uh, advanced, and certainly quite big. Uh, but more importantly, we are a, a listed company on NASDAQ First North. We act within the boundaries of biotechnology and, and, and chemical industries. We are, have a product that is available and it's approved. And approvals are everything in this regulated market, so that's important. We act on global markets uh, because we are a supplier to the global marine paint industry. And as you may know, shipping is uh, occurring all over the place. So that is uh, quite natural. And we have been quite long into the game, meaning the product and the customer products are proven since quite some time. Uh, so what problem are we then looking at when we are uh, spending our time at ITIC? Well, uh, it is marine growth uh, that occurs on the underwater hulls or any underwater structure. Marine growth uh, is cumbersome because it's, uh, it creates a lot of drag. The surface becomes a lot more rough. And of course, uh, from a maintenance perspective, that creates a lot of extra work and cost. Uh, in this case, uh, we have selected one out of several thousand species that are representing the problem of marine biofouling. And we're here talking about barnacles. Uh, as you know, the shell builders that we may cut ourselves on on rocks, but that also create a lot of extra drag. And from this study uh, provided by um, uh, independent universities, although on, on a military vessel, um, there has been a, a quantification of the actual problem. So if, if uh, you look at the right, uh, left hand column here, it's um, the, the surface coverage of barnacles in percentage, and then the, the measured extra shaft power needed to maintain a certain speed. So at 50 knots, at 10% uh, uh, surface coverage, it's already at 36% extra shaft power, which translates quite well into 36% extra fuel consumption as well. And on it goes. Uh, so it's really a big uh, problem to make sure that, uh, well, barnacle fouling is a big problem. And it's very important that we make sure that these figures never occur, uh, as they will destroy any other um, investment in energy ef uh, efficiencies, since these numbers are, are very, very high. So it's all about keeping um, uh, hulls, in this case, on big vessels clean from barnacle fouling. That's everything, and that's where I, our product comes into play. So the product is actually a single molecule. It is uh, used as an ingredient technology in marine paints, and it has a very uh, different effect on molecules and their ability to settle than any other uh, active agent or biocide. It actually triggers the swimming behavior of the barnacle larvae, meaning they can approach the surface, but they cannot settle on the surface as they uh, become hyperactive when they get in contact with the molecule and hence they swim away and settle on another surface. As you can see from the bottom picture, there's a test patch uh, clean from barnacles, which contains the thalicope molecule in very low uh, levels, I should say, which is one other uniqueness of this product. And then comparing to a standard gray, uh, grade antifouling product used uh, commercially um, today. And it's a photo from our leading customers, uh, Shibuko Marine Paints. Uh, and the ship has been uh, in waters only for a year in this case, in the Jap uh, waters of uh, Japan. But it's a stress test, high fouling pressure, and we see here the tremendous power of adding only 0.1% by gram by weight uh, of this molecule that we call Selico. Uh, the company has been available uh, publicly some time, as I mentioned. Uh, the journey has been very interesting with, with growth, uh, strong growth initially. Then we have COVID, so less growth, but still growth. Uh, we're targeting a market worth somewhere around $350 to $500 million. 
and we have a major impact on the global CO2 footprint as shipping itself is representing about 2.6% of global CO2. And as you saw from previous slides, the hull has a tremendous effect. Certainly, there are big chances to save a lot of CO2s if we could contribute to keep hulls clean on all those vessels that are trading around on the water, on the global ocean waters. So what vessels are we then talking about? Well, uh, to the majority of the discussions, we, we include uh, these bigger ones on the left-hand side. Bigger vessels responsible for the commercial trade, so called the seaborne trade, standing for 80% of the global uh, transportation of, of goods and merchandise. Uh, they are around 54,000 vessels in number, uh, all obviously not as big as this one. But these are the ones that consume a lot of fuel, and they are um, bound by uh, docking intervals every five years. Uh, could be even three years, depending on the age of the ship. So it translates into a steady stream of, of, uh, of coating opportunities, not only new building then, but also uh, dry dockings. So this is where fuel makes a difference. This is where selectope makes a difference and where it is included as an ingredient technology in quite some anti-fouling paints uh, sold on the global market today. Then in the middle, there are working boats, also a very big number of boats, but obviously uh, smaller. Uh, fuel contribution to the to the top line is, is important, but not as detrimental as for the other ones. Uh, so here it's um, still a matter of, of keeping hulls clean uh, from a fuel saving perspective, but also important to uh, to avoid transportation of invasive species, as these ones are are frequenting going in the coastal lines of a country and and then are mixing potentially them uh, marine organisms within the the different ecosystems. So so they also have a a strong uh, need for, for, for good performing anti-fouling coatings. And I should also include, very importantly, the leisure boat market that is in volume, not as all uh, as big as these two others, but they are uh, the type of vessels and boats that lay still around, uh, for, for a longer time and they are then exposed to high fouling pressures. Uh, and in numbers, uh, the boats are quite many, uh, and it's a direct-to-consumer kind of uh, industry, which makes it also interesting. And here we are, it's untapped, but we're taking some small steps into this market in Japan and in, in the United States, through different collaborations with uh, paint makers. Uh, customer maturity is important, uh, as uh, the market is very consolidated. Uh, we say it's uh, five leading uh, players, which I think is consensus in the industry. Uh, and then there's an additional four that would be big uh, with uh, regional strong footprints or upcoming companies who, who are who we think may may take a big global position quite soon. But that that's about it. If we target the big uh, the bigger vessels uh, shown on the screen for the good thing here is that ITEC has uh, good uh, progress uh, with most of these. Uh, three are officially commercially uh, operating with, with uh, official products uh, and, and obviously then the orders uh, contributing top line. And then there are a few undisclosed ones that are contributing top line, which are in the so-called scale-up development phase or, or uh, borderline to be market launch, but where for different reasons uh, it's important to keep confidentiality. Uh, for the first quarter, we actually had contributions from six of these nine biggest to our top line, um, and that is very, very good. Uh, products are exemplified by this picture. One can find more on our homepage. Uh, the, the key thing with the product is that they help improve the guarantees on idling on these different products, meaning that the paint sets out to guarantee on how long the ship could be uh, laying still at anchor before uh, it goes into a high risk uh, of, of uh, uh, getting severely fouled. So uh, these idling days are everything in a market which have quite high volatility on the on the active trading routes uh, caused by the different uh, factors, of course. Uh, but idling is something everyone wants to try to improve, and that's where Selicope comes into the equation. Uh, some performance pictures here show a very strong performance on, on new build, which are then uh, laying static for quite some time. And then we have uh, in operation over five years. So new build is maybe one year protection system, and a new uh, stat uh, sorry operation is about five years. In both of these cases, you see a very good 
uh, performance of the Selectop versions of paints uh, on top picture. It's the, the upper part. Uh, on, on this lower picture, it's actually the whole vessel is uh, coated. With a very strong performance compared to the sister vessels over these five years. Regulatory approvals are important. We have them in all key markets. We're currently working our way into the United States over here. Uh, less uh, progressed are New Zealand, Australia, and Canada for reasons uh, related to the shipping are not uh, very, very heavy in, in terms of repairs or new builds in those countries. Uh, Singapore uh, is uh, also actually in our approval, but it requires uh, sometimes uh, notification. But that's a country where we ship in coating, uh, sorry, paint, uh, uh, paint containing silicon or silicon directly. So we cover all the big markets in this industry. Um, the sustainability agenda is quite uh, important. It, uh, it's all about reducing emissions from this industry, as mentioned, and also. Uh, avoiding transport of invasive species. These are the two big ones in which Selectop has a direct contribution to. Uh, looking at the quarter that we just left behind us, we had uh, a very strong first quarter uh, comparing to last, uh, the first quarter last year. We even improved those figures. Uh, at that time, it was uh, probably the best quarter we have had. And now we're improving that further uh, on revenue 7%, on, on, uh, on volume about 12%. Uh, importantly, it's also that we uh, had a positive operating result. I should, must say that uh, external factors are still a, a contributor to uncertainty. Uh, although this quarter came out well, uh, the, the effects are still not over. Uh, Asian um, governments are not uh, managing the vaccination in the same way as, uh, as we're used to in, in the Western world. So we're still seeing restrictions, still the difficulties to to attend the repair or new building programs and so on. So that is still expected to have a, an impact uh, on our business uh, throughout this year. But we're, we're happy with the first uh, quarter that came out so strong. Uh, and strong not only because of those figures, but also because of good customer mix, as mentioned. A lot of new customers are now seeing, uh, showing that they are uh, within the scale up phase and, and hence not too far away from, from continuous orders that we will we, uh, help our growth to, to go back to historic levels. Um, figures uh, are uh, always interesting, but I'll keep them short. Uh, please uh, take notice of, of the EBIT level here that turned out positive for the first time ever, a strong gross margin, and um, a fairly OK uh, top line sales level. Um, and I think, uh, as I said, we have had a strong ground growth. It's now uh, more of a, of a plateau. And we will uh, wait until these uh, pandemic effects and so on will, will fully uh, disappear before we, we shift in and, and expect a, a new uptake in the growth curve. And by that, I uh, await questions. And thank you for uh, listening in to our presentations. Okay, thank you very much, Philip, for an interesting presentation. Uh, I'm going to get started with the first question here. As you mentioned, you presented your Q1 report uh, two weeks ago, where you showed an impressive organic growth of 21%, combined with a record high gross margin of 52%. And in addition, six of the nine leading marine coating companies contributed to ITEC's top line. Despite all these points of joy, you mentioned that there could be some near-term uncertainties in the coming quarters. Could you shed some more light on this? I, I, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the last part of your question there. For some reason, your, your sound faded out here. Um, okay. Maybe the technical uh, people behind could help us uh, get your sound back to me. Okay, do you hear me now? Now it's better. Okay, perfect. So, so as you mentioned, six of the nine leading marine coating companies contributed to your top line, but there could be some near-term uncertainties in the coming quarters. Could you shed some more light on this? Yeah, thank you. Now I hear it clearly. Uh, yes, um, as I mentioned, uh, we're in a global business, and uh, all countries in uh, certainly the Asian part of the world, where most of the activities are occurring, are not really on the same level as uh, we are when it comes to coming through the pandemic, uh, either emotionally or, or by, by vaccination, and then hence uh, being able to unlock the societies again. 
uh, there's still pessimism and there's still outbreaks, there's still restrictions, which put some pressure on, on uh, the, the investment ability, uh, certainly in, in Asian ship owners and also the paint makers who have seen a year where premium uh, anti-fouling coatings have shifted over to more low-grade anti-fouling coatings, which made uh, the, the uptake of Selectope actually uh, slow down, and that also builds up inventory. And I think they need to uh, stay uh, firm on their on their uh, cash and, and make sure inventory is not too high. So that effect will probably come in throughout the year here still. So so um, that's one thing. The other one is uh, raw material prices. Uh, everybody talking about high metal prices or, or or you know lack of semiconductors or whatever it is. Everywhere it seems to be quite congested and prices are rising, which means in our case, uh, where, where silicone and copper uh, is combined into fouling coatings, which are, are quite many uh, products in the market doing that. That obviously puts a new pressure on the on the profitability of selling those kind of premium and fouling coatings. So maybe they, they actually shift to, to some simpler products to, to uh, yeah, make sure they, uh, they keep the gross margins, but that, that's, to potential effects, I'm saying. I'm not 100% sure how they will play, but that's a risk that we are stating for the period up to ask me. Okay, thank you. And also, uh, you have several customers approaching market launch, and several customers are also in the phase of scale-up development. In the coming two to three years, uh, I think that we could see six of the nine leading uh, marine coating companies that should have a product offering, uh, including Selectope, uh, out there in the market. When we get to this point, the market conditions should also be back to normal, uh, both in terms of ship build, new ship build and uh, refurbishing relative to as today when we have COVID impacting the market significantly. How do you view the coming two years for ITEC? I view them very, very positively uh, for the reasons that you say. Uh, we, we're in a slow uh, market right now, but uh, when proving that we have six of the nine and maybe another few coming around, uh, and if you look at a two-year perspective, yes, all of these things should be official, uh, maybe with addition of one or two, who knows? Uh, and that platform is excellent when things start to take off again. So yes, um, it's it's difficult to not be optimistic when we demonstrate what we did in the first quarter and then extrapolate that uh, for two years, uh, well, over the next two years. Mm. Okay, thank you. Sounds, sounds promising. <laughs> and if we widen the scope, I mean, uh, shipping is one of the pillars of our global economy and global trade, with uh, volumes expected to grow for a very long period of time. Um, mm -hmm. However, the industry has a significant environmental impact, and uh, IMO has been very clear that CO2 emissions needs to be greatly reduced by 2050. And one way of getting there is, of course, using more environmentally friendly fuels. But another way of getting there or getting closer is using premium and fouling coatings, uh, such as Selectope, um, which has both a great environmental impact, but also economical Im or econ economic impact. Uh, how do you view the industry's uh, willingness to use premium coatings today relative to, say, 10 years ago? And, uh, and what do you see looking into the future? Um, good questions. Uh, and let me develop that. Um, in terms of anti-fouling contributions to ship hulls, there, there are some who say that uh, there are about $20 billion worth of fuel saving if every ship had the best possible anti-fouling coatings. And that has been communicated some time, but it's not until really the last few years that the industry actually believes that that is a, a relevant figure. Uh, and that comes through different ways of now uh, measuring hull performance, so to say. Uh, so I think the ability uh, and the willingness to pay for that and to invest in, in hull coatings have, have uh, never been higher with some uh, maybe than uh, disruptive uh, COVID effects. But apart from that, the underlying uh, willingness to pay for that and other efficiency technologies is very, very high. And I should also say that fuel transfer, meaning going to something uh, with less fossil contents, uh, might happen, and if it does, that's going to increase the, the propulsion cost even more, which means anti-fouling coatings and, and hull conditions are going to be even more important. So everything is pointing in the direction of, of uh, spending more energy and more money on securing the perfect hull over the five years. And here, Sunnyco comes in as a, as a very interesting and very rare new okay, I, uh, I think we have to interrupt now unfortunately that that's all, that's all the time we had for today but thank you so yeah. much for coming here philip and presenting thank you